Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Prasad Iyer. Uh, I'm a consultant gastroenterologist at Mayo Clinic Rochester, and I have a clinical and research interest in the treatment and management of patients with Barrett's esophagus. So Barrett's esophagus is a precancerous condition, uh, which is thought to be a complication of prolonged uh, gastroesophageal reflux. It is characterized by the replacement of a normal squamous type epithelium in the esophagus by intestinal type lining. Um, the reason why we get concerned about Barrett's esophagus is that patients with this disease have a higher risk of progression to esophageal cancer. The word ablation refers to the destruction of precancerous tissue using a variety of energies, either heat, cold, or photochemical energy. In radiofrequency ablation, we use heat energy to destroy the precancerous cells and replace them with the normal lining of the esophagus with the ultimate goal of decreasing cancer risk. At the current time, radiofrequency ablation is thought to be a, a reasonable tool for the treatment of patients with Barrett's esophagus who have dysplasia. The word dysplasia refers to change away from normal and towards cancer. Dysplasia in Barrett's esophagus can be either low grade or high grade, with high grade dysplasia having the highest risk of progressing to cancer and perhaps being the more suitable indication for uh, the use of radiofrequency ablation. Radiofrequency ablation can be discussed with patients in the treatment of low grade dysplasia. So let's move on and discuss how radiofrequency ablation is applied. It can be applied in two ways. The first technique is circumferential radiofrequency ablation, where we would use a balloon-based catheter to treat Barrett's esophagus, which extends in a circumferential manner all, all around the esophagus. The second way is to use radiofrequency ablation in a focal manner, and by focal we mean tongues or islands. And here we have two or three different catheters that we can use and typically we use these in patients wherein the Barrett's lining is not all around, but is present only in islands or tongues. The treatment itself takes approximately 20 to 30 minutes to apply for the circumferential or all around technique, and perhaps 15 minutes for the focal or the treatment of tongues and islands. The treatment itself is an outpatient procedure patients can get their procedure and return home the same day. What, what, what can one expect after the procedure? The most common issue after the procedure is some degree of pain, which can either be continuous or can occur only while swallowing. The pain typically will last anywhere from seven to 10 days. And typically we will provide patients with medications such as either Tylenol or Tylenol with codeine or a slurry of a local anesthetic to control the pain. We also encourage our patients to be on a liquid diet for the first day after the procedure and start on a soft diet for a week and then advance as tolerated. The procedure itself is safe. However, like any other endoscopic procedure, there are some risks, of, uh, there are some risks and these risks include a small risk of perforation, which is uh, very unusual, a risk of bleeding, which can occur in less than 5% of patients, and uh, finally, um, in a small proportion of patients, because of the injury and scarring, uh, something called a stricture or a narrowing of the esophagus can happen. And this can happen in about six to eight percent of patients and typically can be dealt with with an endoscopic procedure where we can dilate or inflate a balloon across the stricture and cause this narrowing to resolve. Mayo Clinic has been at the forefront of um, a number of studies which have assessed and proven the ability of radiofrequency ablation to work. Um, the most commonly used or the most important outcome measure is decrease in the progression of cancer and that typically works very effectively and radiofrequency ablation has been shown to decrease the risk of progression to cancer in patients with high-grade dysplasia. Um, 
The elimination of Barrett's is a second endpoint, and that typically happens in about 70 to 80 percent of patients. And we can get rid of dysplasia in um, 80 to 90 percent of patients as well. So typically, um, these treatments are administered at an interval of two to three months. And on an average, patients will need anywhere from three to four treatments to completely eradicate the Barrett's. We also recommend that uh, patients should be followed up uh, after these procedures, and uh, this is important in order to detect any recurrence or the Barrett's coming back, and that can happen in about 10 to 15 percent of patients at this time. At Mayo Clinic, we are working on important ways of targeting radiofrequency ablation and figuring out using some genetic markers which patients are more likely to respond and also which patients are more likely to have recurrent Barrett's esophagus following radiofrequency ablation.